Great to have you with us. We begin our program with the launch of Tiangong 2 Space Lab. It is set to blast off in less than two hours at four minutes past 10 Beijing time to be exact from Northwest China's Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. Now, for more on China's latest endeavor in space exploration, we have our reporter Guan Yang who's joining us now at the launch site. Good to have you with us, Guan Yang. Now, we're entering the final countdown for the launch. What's it like there? Mm, yes. Uh, we have less than two hours to go till the final liftoff of the China's second space lab Tiangong 2, and all the ground staff at the uh, uh, areas near the launch pad will be evacuated 30 minutes before the launch, as the mission is now irreversible. Since launching its first space mission in 2003, China staged a spacewalk, landed a rover on the moon, increased its cooperation with Europe in uh, space science and launched a demo space station Tiangong-1 in 2011, making it wholly prepared to bring its space program onto the next level. And this evening, the launch of Tiangong-2 space lab will add more efforts in terms of realizing the Chinese dream in the space because the new space lab uh, enables two astronauts to stay in orbit for 30 days without getting resupplied. This is the longest period ever in the history of China's space, uh, manned space program. And also the space lab will, uh, is able to be docked with manned spacecraft as well as cargo ship for propellant resupply. So all these technical arrangements are crucial for testing the water for China's future space program. Mm, and we've been covering the preparations fairly extensively for the past few days. Can you tell us more about Tiangong 2's task after the liftoff? Yes. Uh, once the new space lab reached the orbit with an altitude of 383 kilometers this evening, uh, there will be a long checklist of tasks that need to be accomplished. The preparations are uh, checking the environmental control. Uh, all the components of the internal cabin will need to be tested and filtered for any small floating particles, and also adjusting its position and altitude uh, to uh, from 380 to 393 kilometers above Earth. Now, we were told by the engineers that such a new trajectory uh, is ideal for China's future space program because the higher the altitude, the less propellants are required for orbiting the space lab. But uh, in order to reach such a new trajectory, we need a more powerful rocket. That is why the Long March 2F rocket has undergone nearly 170 technical modifications to reach uh, to, to match the needs for the launch mission this evening. Chiu Yuan. Thanks so much. Guan Yang joining us live at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. Now, the much anticipated launch will take place in less than two hours at four minutes past 10 Beijing time. The Long March rocket, which carries the Tiangong 2 Space Lab, will be launched from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center in northwest China's Gobi Desert. Founded in 1958, the center is China's earliest launch facility. It is also the country's largest launch site of its kind, covering an area of about 2,800 square kilometers, or more than twice the area of Hong Kong. The Long March rocket will carry Tiangong-2 to an initial orbit about 380 kilometers above the Earth, from where it will test equipment and perform some experiments. The lab will then move to a slightly higher altitude. In October, the Shenzhou 11 manned spaceship will ferry two male astronauts to dock with the lab, and then they will remain there for 30 days. A supply ship will be sent into orbit next year. Now China's aim is to have a permanently inhabited space station. And like its predecessor, Tiangong-2 will also be sent into space with the Long March 2F rocket. So what exactly happens between liftoff and when it reaches orbit? And how long does this process take? Let's now take a look. It takes the rocket 585 seconds to send the space lab into orbit. At 12 seconds after launch, the rocket will have a program to turn and fly along Earth's axis to save fuel. At 155 seconds, four boosters will detach from the main rocket after running out of fuel. At 160 seconds, the first stage rocket will detach and the second stage motor fires up. At 210 seconds, it will carry Tiangong-2 into space. And at 582 seconds, the motor will stop working and detach three seconds later. As mission is accomplished. 
Now, for more on the background on this historical launch, we're now joined in the studio by my colleague Ding Xiao. Now, tell us first about the vision of China's space station. Actually, a good question. It's been a long process in the making. First, you've got Tiangong One and Tiangong Two. And eventually, hopefully, you have a fully fledged space station around 2022. So now, let me share a little bit about the initial space laboratory, Tiangong One, which was launched in 2011. Its primary mission was to simply be a target vessel or for the experimental docking. But Tiangong Two is definitely more advanced. It has two cabins: one for a crew of three people, the other for equipment. It has the resources to sustain its crew for a month. Now, following its launch in October, actually, the Shenzhou 11 spacecraft was sent two astronauts to dock with the Tiangong 2. They'll stay there for 30 days, conducting experiments. This will make it China's longest manned mission. And in 2020, Tiangong 3 will be launched to form a permanent 20-ton space station with more advanced technologies and, of course, longer resources for life support. Now, where does this put China in the global context of space stations? It's interesting out there because right now in the space there are two of them. One is the U.S.-led International Space Station, and of course China's Tiangong One, which is basically terminated its mission now. But the dynamic is shifting. China will soon send an advanced space station, while the International Space Station, led by the U.S., is soon going to be、uh, phased out out of service. That could make China the only country that has its a, a permanent station in the space. While it's being reported that European astronauts are actually learning Chinese to prepare for that, and since 2011,、uh, 2011, the United States Congress has prohibited NASA from contacting China's space program, fearing national security issues. And、previous stations, including、uh, Russia's、uh, Salyut series,、uh, America's Skylab, and most recently Mir. China started late. Its first satellite was sent into space in 1970. That just came after the U.S. put a man on the moon. But China has put a lot of time and effort into the catching up, and soon it's going to lead the world. Tuyan. Thanks so much, Ying Xiao. Now, in 2003, Chinese astronaut Yang Liwei became the first person sent into space by the Chinese space program, and that mission, known as the Shenzhou Five, made China the third country after the U.S. and Russia to independently send a person into space. Now, Yang is one of the commanders in the Tiangong Two mission. Ahead of the launch, CCTV's Han Peng had an exclusive interview with China's first astronaut. You fulfilled China's first manned space mission in 2003, and since then, China has undoubtedly made huge progress on manned space exploration. Which part has impressed you the most? When I was in space, I stayed in a very small capsule, just a few cubic meters in size. That was where I lived and worked throughout the mission. But this time, after the two astronauts reach the Tiangong Two space lab, they will stay there for a whole month, which will test whether our space lab will be able to provide healthy conditions for humans to live and work. Meanwhile, with the conditions improved, the two astronauts will be able to carry out a huge number of experiments, including aerospace medicine and space lab repair and maintenance. So there is very impressive progress in many areas, including the length of time, the nature of the experiments, and the condition of the space lab. I remember 13 years ago, I was still a student watching you on TV, and we were deeply concerned about your personal safety, your personal health, as well as the success of your mission. And now, 13 years later, since two of your younger colleagues will soon be sent to space, do you think they are facing a bigger challenge or a smaller challenge compared to a decade ago? Uh, 当然，像我刚才跟您介绍的，因为呃任务发生了很大的不同。As I said, we have many new tasks this time, so there are also tougher requirements for our astronauts. For example, they will stay in space for a significantly longer time, which will demand a stronger ability to adapt to the environment and handle emergencies should they happen. They will also carry out a lot more complicated experiments, for which they have gone through extensive training. That's why when we're selecting the astronauts, we have raised the standards in their personal ability and scientific knowledge. These are all new requirements, which we did not stress as much when I was selected. 
because at the time we focused more on the technological breakthrough than the astronauts' ability. You were an astronaut deep in space, and now you are in the office commanding two of your younger colleagues in space. Do you have bigger pressure 13 years ago in space, or do you have a bigger pressure today in the office? Uh, I think Frankly speaking, I feel a much bigger pressure in my position today. When I was in space, the only thing I needed to worry about is whether I can fulfill my own work. But now each time I send astronauts on their missions, I always tell people that I'm even more stressed than the time I went on my mission. These astronauts are my colleagues and friends that I've worked with side by side. We have selected them to fulfill a very risky mission for the team and for all human beings. And I, as one of the commanders, have an immense responsibility to prevent any slightest detail from going wrong. It's the same feeling for everyone. I remember in 2003, I watched the playback on TV after I returned from space, and I found many of my colleagues in the mission control room burst into tears when the mission was accomplished. And now it's the same to me. Now for more on this, let me bring in Professor Yang Yuguang from the China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation. Thanks for joining us. Good evening, Chiu Yan. So the rocket carrying Tiangong 2 space lab is set to blast up in just less than two hours. Which is the most challenging part you see here? Well, uh, although Tiangong 2 originally is the backup of Tiangong 1 and the uh, technical specifications have not been changed much, and the Long March 2F is also a very practical uh, launch vehicle, but still we have many challenges. You see, Tiangong to have already have so many scientific research uh, payloads on board, so complex. So uh, to uh, make it work normally is a great challenge. And the refueling technology uh, in the next year will be tested by the uh, Tiangong 2 and the first uh, cargo ship. This is more complex and also it is a very dangerous procedure. Concerning the future space station, you, you know that uh, China uh, plans to launch the first experimental core module called Tianhe in 2018. China has never operated a so big 2010 level spacecraft before. And for the future space, one critical technology is a regenerative life support system. This will not be tested in this Tiangong 2, although Tiangong 2, the two astronauts will stay there for 30 days, the longest records in China, but uh, it will not test this regenerative life support system. Uh, and if uh, we want the astronauts to stay in the future space station for half a year, this will be the most critical one. Now, China is pushing ahead with this project, while other international space stations are being phased out. How do you see the cooperation between China and other countries and space stations? Well, uh, it is really a big pity that China do not have the chance to uh, cooperate in the ISS program due to many reasons. But actually speaking, there are some small corporations. Uh, in 2014, uh, during the International Astronautical Congress, I met a company called NanoRack. And this company now has provided some uh, chance for a small payload to be uh, experimented on the ISS. They have a rack on board it. And uh, considering China's future space station, uh, uh, yesterday, Ms. Wu Ping has uh, announced that uh, China welcome other countries to cooperate with, uh, with, with China in this future space station. And uh, it already has uh, signed some uh, agreement with UN to provide chances for the future uh, cooperative experiments and also the visit of foreign astronauts in this space station. And China recognized this space station as a national level laboratory of China in space. So uh, it also hopes that have more chance to cooperate with other countries. All right, thank you very much. And you'll also be here for the special coverage for the launch. Thank you for thank your you, Yan. insights on this. Now, in June, four volunteers began to simulate the experience of living in a sealed space capsule for 180 days. Well, they are halfway through their experiment at the Shenzhen Southern Research Institute of Space Technology. And to celebrate, they were able to call their families and make 3D printed mooncakes for the Mid-Autumn Festival. The 370 square meter capsule is made out of six giant boxes with no simulation of weightlessness. Vegetables, fruits and various crops are cultivated in a tank to ensure a constant food and water supply. The volunteers are trying to simulate a journey to Mars, which is ultimately part of China's space program.